as your storage account, as your subscription, as your resource group, as your load balancers. All these services sounds really unrelated, right? Wrong. As an Azure administrator, you must understand how all these services come together, how they work together. So that is why we will take some questions based on all these services. I have covered all these topics, all these concepts, Microsoft Azure services with proper explanation to all the questions and Microsoft documentation to support all the answers and validation of the same. So please watch this important video and the entire playlist to understand all the Microsoft Azure concept and be prepared to become an Azure administrator and pass the EZ104 certification exam. Hey everyone, welcome back to the EZ104 exam practice question series and let's take some very important questions to understand all the concepts that I just listed. Here comes the very first question for today. So let's begin the part 42 of AZ104 Q&A series with question number 236. A great question to understand the Azure storage account and related concepts. So let's read the question. It says that you have an Azure storage account named Storage1 and you have an Azure app service or service app named App1 and an app named App2 that runs in an Azure container instance. Now each app uses a managed identity and you need to ensure that the App1 and App2 can read the blobs from Storage1. The solution must meet the following requirements. The first one is minimize the number of secrets used. And the second one is ensure that the app 2 can only read from storage 1 for next 30 days. What should you configure on storage 1 for each app? Now let's check out the option. Option A, create a shared access signature SAS for each app with read permissions and an expiration date of 30 days. Option B, create a shared access signature for each app with read permission and an expiration date of one day. Option C, create a shared access signature for each app with read permissions and an expiration date of seven days and then we have option d create a shared access signature for each app with the read permissions and with an expiration date of 365 days now friends looking at all the options here one thing you can note that this part of all the options is same so we are creating a shared access signature for each app with the read permission so this part is exactly the same for all the four options now we have other differences are 30 days one day seven days and 365 days and what are we asked in the question we are asked for the 30 days so now you can guess the answer and yes you are right the correct answer is option a now let me give you a little bit more details here now to allow app 1 and app 2 to read the blobs from the storage one in Azure, you can create a shared access signature or SAS for each app with read only permissions. However, since the app two should only have the access for next 30 days, here you can see that that is the requirement of the question. You should set the expiration date for SAS to 30 days. So that's why option A is the correct answer. And friends, in case you're new to the cloud computing world and want to know what are the highest paying cloud computing jobs in the year 2025 and how to prepare for them, whether you're coming from the Azure, AWS or GCP, then please watch these two important videos and you will understand all about the different job roles. In these two videos, I've explained 22 highest paying job roles in the world of cloud computing. Whether you are a newcomer or intermediate or advanced, whether you like the programming or not, there is a job role for you. So please watch these videos and start your cloud computing career. Moving on with the question number 237, it says that you have an Azure subscription that contains Azure storage account named storage one and the users are shown in the following table. So here we have user one, two, three, which are member of group one, group two and group one. Then you plan to monitor storage one and to configure email notifications for signals shown in the following table. So here in this table, you can see that we have ingress, which is incoming data to Azure. Then we have egress, which is the data which goes out of the Azure. Then we have delete storage account. We have also restore blob ranges. The type is metric for the first two one and the activity log for the last two one. What are the users to notify? Here we have user one and user three only. For the egress, we have user one only. For the delete storage account, we have user one, two, and three only. And for the restoration of the blob storage, we have user one 
and user 3 only i hope you understood the question so far so it just says that when some activity happens then you have to notify the users given here in this column of the table now let's move ahead the question says that you need to identify the minimum number of alert rules and the action groups required for the planned monitoring how many alert rules and the action groups should you identify to answer select the appropriate option in the answer area so first of all you have to tell how many alert rules and secondly you have to tell the action groups so one two three four the choices are same for both of the uh, options and the correct answer for the first one or the alert rules is four so you would need minimum of four alert rules what about the action groups well here you would need three action groups to ensure all the requirements given in the question now let me explain this a little bit more so coming to this box here so as there are four distinct set of resources we can see them here ingress egress delete storage account and restore blob storage so you need four alert rules in one alert rule you cannot specify different type of resources to monitor that is why a minimum of four alert rules are required coming to this box here action groups for this one we have three distinct set of users to notify we have user one user two and user three and you cannot actually set the action groups based on existing group like group one or group two as there is no specific group for the user one only so that is why you actually need to create three action groups which is the minimum requirement so i hope you understood the concept read the entire question once again you have users given you have resources given and you have what all users to notify when any trigger or anything happens on these resources and joining all this information we have chosen the answer four for the alert rules and three for the action groups and with that piece of information let's move ahead question number 238 is in front of you let's read the question it says that you have an azure subscription named subscription one that contains resource group named rg1 now this rg1 or the resource group you create an internal load balancer named lb1 and a public load balancer named lb2 now in case you have been watching our series we took very interesting question on the load balancer in the previous episodes please check out that further the question is saying that you need to ensure that an administrator named admin1 can manage load balancer1 and load balancer2 the solution must follow the principle of least privilege what role should you assign to the admin one for each task and what are the tasks well there are two tasks to add backend pool to the lb1 and the other one is to add the health probe to the lb2 and interestingly the correct answer for both the tasks is network contributor on rg1 so that is the correct answer for this question Moving on to another very interesting question. Question number 239 says that you have an Azure subscription that contains two virtual machines, VM1 and VM2. Now you create a Azure load balancer and you plan to create a load balancing rule that will load the balance HTTPS traffic between the VM1 and VM2. So basically we are managing or load balancing the traffic between all the virtual machines in this case we have two virtual machines which two additional load balancer resources should you create before you can create the load balancing rule your options are option a a front-end ip address option b a health probe option c an inbound nat rule option d a virtual network and option e a backend pool now let me tell you what are the two additional load balancer resources you need to create before you can try for the try to create the load balancing rule and the first one is option b the health probe and the second one is option e the backend pool now let me present you my understanding on this so first of all of course you need to create the backend pool and the health probe before you create a load balancing rule now the backend pool my friends it's very critical component of the load balancer why because the backend pool really defines the group of the resources that serve traffic for a given load balancing rule and in this case we have virtual machine and virtual machine 2 virtual machine 1 and virtual machine 2 in the backend pool now coming to the health probe now health probe will actually monitor the health of the virtual machines in the backend pool to ensure the network is only sent 
to the healthy instance and if you read the question very carefully it says that you create an azure load balancer what does that even mean i mean of course you create the azure load balancer but when you create a azure load balancer which is given in this question that you create a azure load balancer then you know what happened implicitly a front end ip address is automatically created so when you have the load balancer you cannot have a uh, load balancer or a front end load balancer without a public facing ip address so that is why this cannot be true because this is already being created when you have created the load balancer so that is why this is not uh, a valid answer so now you know that you have to create a health probe and a back end pool before you create a rule for a load balancing okay so with that let's move on to the next question question number 240 it says that you plan to use azure import and export service to copy files to azure storage account which two files should you create before you prepare the drives for the import job and your options are option a an xml manifest file option b a data set csv file option c a json configuration file option d a powershell ps1 file and option d a drive set csv file and the correct answer for the same is option b a data set csv file and the second one is a drive set csv file so you have to understand that when you are using the azure import and export service to copy the files uh, to a azure storage account you should create the following two types of file which we have just chosen as the answer now coming to the data set csv file this file contains the details of the files to be imported such as the name of the file the size of the files and also the path of the file on the drive which where the files are residing coming to this one here the drive set csv file this file actually specifies the details of the drive to be used in the import job such as drive letter the path of the drive and the name of the drive therefore option b and option e are the two correct answers for this question and yes in the next video i am going to take questions on resource group microsoft intro id conditional access very important microsoft concepts in case you are preparing for the az 104 administrator exam and please do watch the previous and the next episode of this series and also the other certification series on both microsoft azure and amazon aws and not only that i also keep releasing multiple videos on free exam vouchers free certifications from all the tech giants in the cloud computing world and also in the world of AI and Gen AI. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.